Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today, I want to pay tribute to my guitar dad, Pat Grogan. And I didn't call him a guitar teacher because he was uh, so much more than that. And just to make things clear, he is still, as of May 2022, he is still alive and kicking, uh, pushing 90 uh, outside of Corpus Christi, Texas. So uh, so this is for you, Pat. This is a, uh, a thank you. And uh, I... I want to tell Pat's story, and uh, I want you to know about the significant uh, people that he's been associated with, and uh, recordings, and uh, you know, and institute musical institutions that he's been involved with. Very, he's uh, you know in the South Texas Music Hall of Fame, uh, the Texas CMA, um, just a, a great guy. So I'm going to talk about him today. So and uh, and what what he means to me. All right. Well, uh, I guess I'll tell how I met Pat. So, of course, I've told in some of my other episodes how I was, you know, mainly into R and B and uh, and rock and blues and things like that, and was a big Eric Clapton fan. That was kind of my main guitar influence. That and Stevie Ray Vaughan. And I happened to buy a Clapton album called Just One Night. And of course, this was from the late 70s, and during that era, Clapton was very much in a J.J. Cale and even a Don Williams kind of phase, where he was very influenced by uh, country music and, you know, recorded Tulsa time. And during this era, he fired his Tulsa band, the Tulsa Tops, that included, you know, guys like Jamie Oldacre and Carl Radle and, and such, and George Terry on guitar. He fired them and hired an all-Brit band. That included Albert Lee. So Albert Lee left the Hot Band and uh, to do a solo record, and then ended up uh, joining out uh, Clapton's band. So on this album, of course, you, I was the first time I'd heard uh, Albert Lee, and of course, you could easily tell the difference between the two players because they had very distinct styles. Well, that sent me down the rabbit hole of country music, and I started listening to James Burton and Merle Haggard and uh, you know Ricky Skaggs and all sorts of things. And, of course, being in South Texas, being in Kingsville, Texas, there weren't really a whole lot of, uh, you know, guys to go see that were playing in that style. So I went to the, uh, the music store in the, in the next, in the, in the big city of Corpus Christi, and I went to Clausen's Music, which was, uh, you know, one of the shops that I would, I would frequent. And I asked Bubba Clausen, uh, I said, uh, you know, I want to learn how to play country guitar, uh, you know, like Albert Lee and uh, Ricky Skaggs and things like that. And he said, well, I have your guy. He, uh, you know, he gives lessons here, you know, all through the week. His name's Pat Grogan. So at the time, I didn't know this, but uh, Pat had uh, a wonderful, um, you know, kind of you know, musical pedigree. He had... Uh, he had been the staff, you know, one of the staff guitar players on the Big D Jamboree. If you don't know what that is, uh, think about the Grand Ole Opry. And so the Grand Ole Opry was one of many, uh, you know, radio shows that went on. That was a regional radio show. And so Chicago, um, you know, Shreveport, Louisiana had uh, the Louisiana Hayride. You had the the Barn Dance. You had all these radio shows that were all over the U.S., and uh, the Big D Jamboree was the Dallas version of that, and so that was where all the big country stars of the day would come and play the Big D Jamboree, and so many times they came without their bands, and so Pat Grogan played with all the big, you know, stars of the day in the, uh, in the, in the late 50s and early 60s. So, uh, Pat also, you know, probably one of the most well-known recordings that he uh, played on was the Bruce Chanel tune, Hey Baby. So that's with Delbert McClinton playing harmonica and, uh, and Pat's, of course, playing guitar. And that was recorded in, uh, in Dallas. Uh, let's see a few other things. Uh, probably the biggest star that Pat played with was Willie Nelson. So he played with Willie uh, in his pre-outlaw days, so specifically in his uh, you know early '60s period, where he was having a lot of success as a songwriter, but not much as a solo artist. So he was signed to RCA and uh, and uh, 
Pat played with him during that period of time. And during that time, he even got to play on a session that Chet Atkins was producing. And uh, Pat told me that he was very nervous and uh, he started playing like Chet. And Chet came over and told him, he said, if I wanted that type of playing, you know, I would be there. He said, you do your thing. And so that was, of course, a big, uh, uh, you know, a, a big lesson in that, uh, you know, he didn't need to, you know, play like his hero, Chet Atkins. He needed to do his own thing. And uh, Pat did. And uh, Pat, let's see, a few other things. He was uh, also the, uh, he was at least a, a part owner of Panther Hall, which of course was a famous music venue in, uh, in Fort Worth. And uh, of course there were many famous uh, live albums by everyone from, uh, let's see, Charlie Pride, Willie Nelson, and others uh, made live albums from Panther Hall. So he was involved in that. Apparently there was also maybe an annex to it that Pat was involved in. And Pat played there uh, with the, the Cow Towners, I think was the name of the band. And uh, yeah, so Pat had this, uh, he spent all this time, he spent some time in Nashville, but spent a lot of time in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the Metroplex as they call it. And then, uh, you know, had kind of a change of life and decided that he wanted to, uh, you know, slow down some and get a, a change of scenery. And so he moved down to Corpus Christi, Texas and began playing and teaching down there. And that's when I, you know, ran into him. And uh, so I met him at Clausen's Music, you know, Bubba Clausen, which again, Clausen's Music is still around in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, you know, I've played shows with, uh, you know, Bob and Barbara Clausen. And uh, of course, you know, had, had many deals with uh, Bubba Clausen, sold me a lot of guitars back in the day. And uh, yeah, so I would go and hang out at Clausen's Music and take lessons with Pat Grogan. And then here's where it goes beyond the normal kind of guitar teacher student uh, relationship. He uh, he started taking me on his gigs. So at first, I would just go with him and shadow him and watch what he was doing, and uh, and I was just you know kind of absorbing. Then he started taking me, and I was playing with him on on his gigs and. Uh, and I just learned a lot. I learned a whole lot. And he learned what I needed help with. So, in, you know, whenever I would fall on my face, you know, he knew that that's what we needed to work on on the next lesson. And one of the, uh, one of the kind of constant gigs that we had was Pat played at an uh, Italian restaurant on Padre Island uh, called Island Italian. And it's still there. It's a little place. And it had a little dance floor, and we would play it as a duo. And so Pat would have a, a, a keyboard with a sequencer and, of course, his guitar. And I would have my, uh, I had an American Standard Strat that I had bought, you know, with uh, money made working at a music store. And I had a 1979 Twin Reverb, uh, which was, of course, huge overkill. But I had that, and... Uh, Pat's tone was so much better than mine, and he was using a PV uh, Special 130, and he had this, uh, uh, you know, PV guitar, and uh, and part of it was he was using delay, and uh, so he had echo on, and uh, and he just, well, I mean, he had he had a better touch with the instrument, but uh, I I remember vividly uh, deciding to get an you know a, a delay pedal. Uh, because of Pat, and so I, uh, he had he was using a DD2, and so I I picked up a, a DD3, brand new, and I took it on the gig, and it died during the gig because I was using it with batteries, and Pat, you know, I learned from Pat, it's like that's a digital delay pedal, it's going to eat through a battery in no time. You need to get an adapter for it so that uh, you're not just, uh, you know, because you're going to kill a battery in about two to three hours, which he was absolutely right. So, uh, yeah, so there I was with my Strat and my 7,935 watt twin reverb, you know, using the tilt back legs and uh, playing at this Italian restaurant. And we would play everything from polkas because there were a lot of winter Texans. So a lot of people from, uh, you know, especially like Minnesota and such uh, would uh, would come down to Texas, uh, you know, during the uh, during the winter because it was just... You know, uh, you know, in, in South Texas, it, it you know hardly ever froze, and uh, even during the winter time, many many times it would be in the 
50s to 70s, you know, mo most of the time. So they would come down, and many of them were of uh, German or Polish, uh, you know, kind of heritage. And so we would end up playing a lot of polkas, you know, beer barrel, polka, and such. And we would play things like Stardust or Chris Christofferson's uh, Help Me Make It Through the Night. And I always thought it was funny when Pat Grogan would say, take the ribbon from my hair, you know, <laughs> that's the way he would sing it. And uh, yeah, we would just have so much fun playing. And again, Pat would see me play all these different type of, of types of tunes and different genres. And uh, then we would work on it. And Pat got me all sorts of gigs. He started playing on a Opry type show in, uh, in, uh, in Corpus Christi. It was called DW's Country Showplace. It was Dexter Wright. And... Dexter didn't want to hire me because I was uh, too young because I think I was probably 19 or 20 at the time and he you know was hiring a bunch of guys that were you know in their 40s and up and he didn't want to hire a, a 20 year old uh, you know guitarist or bass player and so uh, the bass player ended up uh, you know quitting and all of a sudden Pat said you're a bass player and I started taking bass lessons from him and I bought a of course bought a PV uh, uh, Fury bass. It was their uh, version of a uh, precision, and I, uh, you know, learned how to play bass and started started doing that, and then eventually moved over over to guitar, and just got all sorts of great experience and got to uh, got to play with Hank Thompson. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Hank Thompson, he uh, had the Wild Side of Life. He was a, a huge star in the in the '40s and early '50s, and he had some uh, funny songs like. Uh, my tears have wiped "I Love You" from the blackboard of my heart and uh, other other tunes. And um, he, uh, Hank, played a uh, a big Super Four Hundred type guitar that was actually made by Heritage. But he played a real Super Four Hundred back in the day because his hero was Merle Travis, and he even had Merle Travis in his band at one point. So he had a sunburst, you know, Super Four Hundred type guitar with his Hank Thompson in the neck and a Bigsby vibrato, and he played uh, the instrumental uh, I'll See You in My Dreams, which was uh, really fun to play with him. And so we got to play two shows. We did like an evening show and a matinee show. And I didn't realize it because I was so naive, because again, I was around 20 years old at this point. But uh, Hank Thompson was totally wasted, totally wasted, to the point that, uh, you know, he was kind of staggering around a little bit on stage. And then uh, but what really kind of sealed the deal was, of course, I had rehearsed with um, Hank and then also played two shows with him. And afterwards, I wanted my picture taken with him. And he didn't realize at all that I had uh, that I just played two shows with him. And uh, so, yeah, so that was another one of the really fun you know, gigs that I uh, you know, got to play. And we opened shows for like Ray Price and all sorts of acts. And it was just a, a lot of fun. And then he you know, was very supportive. Uh, when I decided I wanted to move to Nashville and always just been uh, been great to me and uh, I have gotten to visit him a couple times you know through the years but I just don't make it down to, to South Texas much anymore but uh, yeah I just want everyone to know uh, especially Pat how grateful I am for him going above and beyond the call of duty and not just being my guitar teacher but being really my guitar dad my musical father who, uh, who took me and uh, taught me, took me on all of his gigs. When, wherever I messed up and had problems, we would work on that on the next lesson. And they helped me with guitar tone and uh, you know getting better sounds and, and better gear and uh, just learned so much from Pat. And he really supported me and, uh, yeah. and I learned so much about gig etiquette and how to treat people and... Yeah. And so, uh, you know, Pat is, uh, you know, pushing 90 and, uh, again, he's outside of Corpus Christi and, uh, you know, I hope he's, uh, still playing gigs, but, uh, I just want to say thank you to Pat. And I think this really inspires me to, uh, to try to do the same, you know, for others. And, uh, and so thank you. All right, guys, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.